Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. In this video, I'm going to go over the Story and Passage API for Sugarcube 2.0. While creating in Twine, there might be a need to know the details about the story and the passages within it. That's where the Story API can be very useful. For example, if we wanted to know the name of the story, there is a story title functionality to retrieve that. And here's an example of that right here. It tells us the name of the story is Sugarcube 2.0, Story and Passage and we'll review the code in a few moments. Beyond simply the name of a story, we can also look for and get passages from within the story through using their name using either story has to see if a story has a passage with that name or story get to retrieve a passage by a very specific name. And here's an example of that right here. So the content of search target, which is a passage we'll look at in just a few moments, is some content. And the example I put together here is effectively the same thing of using the include macro, uh, but I wanted to show a demonstration of how to do that. Like the story API, there's also a passage object representing the results of searching for a passage with story get. Like with story, each passage has its own title, tags, and unprocessed content called text. However, the most common functionality used with passage is process text, which is a function call. Used in this last example, it returns the process text. And we see the process content is some content here. Now let's go look at the code for this. So starting in the start passage, we see an example of using story tile, where I'm using the set macro within SugarCube to set the content of the variable test to whatever story title is. In this case, sugarcube 2.0 colon story and passage. As we saw in the example. So the name of the story is, and then we have it display the content of the variable test, which was set just a moment ago using the macro set to the result of story title. Now let's move over to looking for passages. Now looking for passages uses sort of a complex chain of macros here. The first of which is an if macro, starting here, the opening tag for it, and then the closing tag to combine whatever's within the if macro statement. And we say if story has a passage with the name search target, so if this returns true, in which case we would then execute this code, which it is, there is a passage named search target. And just to verify that, we'll close out for just a second and I'll show you that. So there's a target right here, a passage called search target. Its content is some content. So coming back to looking for passages, we say, okay, it does. If story has a passage with the name search target, and it does, let's do this. So set the variable passage content to story get. So get the content, get the get a passage object of a passage representing with its name search target and then call process text as I reviewed in the examples here. And so it would process the text of that passage. And then we then display the content using just listing it with the variable to display its value of passage content. So the content of a passage search target is some content. And this combines here both story get, getting the content, getting a passage object representing a passage with the name search target as well as because then it comes back with result calling process text which is a passage function on that result. So this uses story functionality to get the passage and then uses passage functionality on the result effectively chaining each of these together. And then as we saw the content was some content. And again as I mentioned here getting the content of a passage, processing it, and then displaying it is effectively doing the same as using the include macro with some passage name. So it's not as useful as it could be, but it's a good demonstration of how we can use story has to look for something, and then use story get to get a passage, and then act on that passage in some way, and then display its contents or perform some other action as well. So moving over to the passage, passage, we see the same sort of general idea I just reviewed here. So setting content to story get and then processing its text, which is right here. Now, as I'll mention here, like process text, there's also text, which is the unprocessed text of a passage. Now, they are dissimilar in that 
the unprocessed text may contain some type of combination of functionality or macro calls within Sugarcube that may not be immediately run unless they're processed. So to show you what that means in practice here, let's go look at search target two. So search target two actually uses the set macro from Sugarcube to perform some action by setting the value of the variable example to the string some content and then displaying it here. So effectively we are then running that code because we are processing the text with that is within the passage search target two. So coming back to this similar to how you would use include to run some code that's in another passage we're getting it then we're processing it and then we're displaying it, which again is basically the same as using the include. However, this could be different if we did not process the text, but instead just got it. Displaying it would then execute it because it would be the same general action. However, we could store it and then possibly change it if we wanted using other macros and functionality that's not listed here or perform some other actions to it as well. If we wanted to just retrieve some text, do something to it and then act on it, we could do that as well. So this sort of gives us two different options here. We can use this sort of raw unprocessed text using passage.text or we could process the text and effectively run it in a way or change the markup to something it could be displayed using process text functionality. And sort of two different, it, similar when, when displayed in this way, but different enough that they could be practical in different applications of using them. And then the same with what I showed with story title, we can also get the title of a passage in case we need to look it up or we want to know. But of course, if we're already looking for the name, we have it, as well as we can get the tags that are associated with that passage that are added within this tag area. Now, I highly suggest actually going and looking at the documentation for this. And the way you can go about looking for that is remembering that to change the story format of a story within the Twine editor, you click on the name of the story, you click on change story format, and then it lists them all. And in this case, I'm using Sugarcube 2.0, which in this case is 2.18. And then there's a link to the documentation. Clicking on that will send you to HTML representation of the documentation, and you can work your way through and pull from some of the functionality that I've demonstrated in this video for the story and passage objects and API for both getting information about the story and getting information about passages then within that story as well. Thanks for watching.